In the next few minutes, I will show you everything you need to know to use the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 properly, what hidden features it has and how to get the most out of the Pocket 3. This tutorial also includes the most important features that have been added via updates in recent months. It is divided into 10 parts. These correspond to the 10 best features and strengths of the Pocket 3. The first major strength of the Pocket 3 is its special design with the integrated gimbal. There are a few important things you should know about the setup and the first activation. You can attach either the handle with the one quarter thread or the battery handle to the underside of the camera. You can remove it again by pressing the release button. Using one of the two handles is highly recommended as it makes it much easier to hold the pocket free. You can connect various accessories to the USB-C port, a USB cable to charge the pocket free or connect it to a PC, wired headphones and microphones and the wireless microphone receiver. The SD card slot is located on the left side. You should use very fast SD cards for the pocket free. They should be at least UHS-1 level 3 cards to ensure trouble-free use. For example, like this card from Sendisk. You can find a link to it in the video description. After you have sufficiently charged the Pocket 3, you can switch it on and activate it. There are two ways to switch on the Pocket 3, by turning the screen to the right or by pressing the capture button. If you switch on the Pocket 3 by pressing the capture button, by default it will start in portrait mode. In other words, to take vertical videos. You have to activate the Pocket 3 at the beginning. To do this, you need to connect it to the DJI Memo app. Once you have downloaded the DJI Memo app, connect your Pocket 3 via Connect and you can now activate it. With the Memo app, you can fully control the Pocket 3. In addition, only the app contains a few special and useful features that I will show you at the end of the video. And also very important, you can use the app to install the latest firmware update. You should do this as new features are constantly being added via updates. If a new firmware is available, you will be notified here and you can simply and easily make an update. The second great strength of the Pocket 3 is its simple operation using the two buttons. Of course, you can start and stop a recording with the record button. If you press and hold the record button during a recording, the current recording is not only stopped, but also deleted immediately. However, if you press and hold the record button during normal operation, you can use it to switch off the pocket free. The left button, or rather the small joystick, also has several functions. By moving it to the left, right, up or down, you can control the gimbal and thus the actual camera. If you briefly press the joystick twice, the gimbal automatically returns to its starting position. If you press it briefly three times, the gimbal rotates on its own axis and you can now take selfie shots. If you press it three more times, the camera rotates forwards again. If you are in a menu, you can exit the menu by pressing the joystick once. The Pocket 3 also has a zoom feature. You will find it on the right edge of the display. Normally, you zoom in and out by swiping the zoom slider up or down. When you tap it, the appearance of the zoom slider changes and you can now zoom in and out by pushing pushing the joystick up or down. Even if this is well done in terms of operation, you should avoid zooming. Zooming leads to a digital crop, which reduces the image quality. All other features of the Pocket 3 are operated via the extremely useful touch display. Swiping from top to bottom opens the control menu. Here you can activate several important features. We will take a closer look at these in a moment. If you swipe from left to right, you will see a preview of your recordings. You can view your clips here, add them to your favorites by tapping the heart and of course you can also delete your recordings here. If you swipe from bottom to top, you can adjust the most important recording settings, such as resolution and frame rate. Swiping from right to left opens the menu with the image and audio settings. Earlier we rotated the camera by pressing the joystick three times. You can also rotate the camera by tapping on the small camera icon at the bottom right. And then there is another important feature here. If you tap on the icon at the bottom left, you can set the recording mode. There are six different shooting modes. You can take panorama photos, normal photos or slow motion shots. But mostly you will use the Pocket 3 in video mode. That's why we're going to focus on the video mode today. And very important, there is a special recording mode for video recordings in low light. This means that you should use this mode for better results in low light conditions, such as in the evening or indoors. As the Pocket 3 is also ideal for exceptional time-lapse shots, we will also take a closer look at the time-lapse mode later. But let's start with the recording settings in video mode. The outstanding image quality of the Pocket 3's video recordings is one of its particular strengths. You can influence the image quality by adjusting the various recording settings. But there is not one setting that is ideal for all situations. So let's take a closer look at the recording settings and I'll explain what effects they have on the image quality. First of all, you need to decide whether you want to take a shot in portrait mode or a horizontal shot in landscape mode. 
I would say that the landscape mode is the default shooting mode. However, there are several ways to switch to portrait mode for vertical videos. You can switch the pocket free on with the record button, then it will activate itself directly in portrait mode. If on the other hand you are in landscape mode and turn the screen upwards and then interrupt the switch off with continue, the camera will also switch to portrait mode. And the third way is via the control menu. To do this, swipe from top to bottom. You can use this icon here below to set the orientation. Now the camera will always work in this orientation, regardless of how you have switched it on or how you have rotated the screen. This is particularly useful if you only shoot in a certain orientation. Ok, now let's take a look at the resolution and frame rate. To do this, swipe your finger from bottom to top. For optimum results, you should always use the highest possible resolution, which would be 4K. If you use the pocket free in portrait mode, the highest resolution is 3K. The following applies to the frame rate. The more frames per second, the smoother your recording will look. Frame rates of 24 or 25 frames per second are considered particularly cinematic. For a cinematic look, you should therefore use 24 or 25 frames per second. But be careful, if you don't use ND filters, a low frame rate can lead to a very choppy and unsteady look when there is a lot of movement. A higher frame rate of 50 or 60 frames per second, for example, not only gives you a much smoother look, but also allows you to create slow motion shots of up to 40%. However, a a higher frame rate not only requires more memory, it also consumes more energy and is a disadvantage in poor lighting conditions. So unless you absolutely need it, I would advise against it. If you don't know what frame rate to use at the beginning, I recommend 30 frames per second to start with. It looks relatively smooth and doesn't have the disadvantages of high frame rates. For particularly cool slow motion shots, at 100 or 120 frames per second, you need to use the dedicated slow motion recording mode. There are two things you should know when using the slow motion recording mode. The recordings are saved directly in slow motion and they do not contain any audio. The audio is saved in a separate file. This mode is therefore not really suitable for normal recordings. So if you are not sure whether you want to slow down the footage at all. But let's go back to the standard video mode. For the advanced image and audio settings, we need to swipe from right to left. Here you can activate glamour effects. If you have activated this feature, you can use the app to smooth the skin, make the face or nose smaller, make the eyes and mouth bigger and so on. You can tell that the feature is active by the small face at the top right. However, you will not see the effect in the preview. To apply the effects, you need to connect the Pocket 3 to the DJI MIMO app after taking the shot. Now you can see the effect in the preview. And the effect is actually only applied to the clip when you download it in the app. And this is done in the default settings. But you can also adjust and deactivate the various beauty filters in the app. To do this, tap on the settings and beautify. This also works for clips for which the glamour effect was not active during recording. In this case, however, the effect is not automatically applied during the download, but you still have to add it. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these filters, although at my age I should perhaps use them more often. The Pocket 3, like any other camera, processes the shots before saving them. The contrast at the edges is increased. That means sharpness is added and image noise is automatically removed. Image noise mainly occurs when taking shots in poor lighting conditions. If you tap on image adjustment and then on custom, you can influence precisely these two adjustments. You can add or remove more sharpness or you can also reduce or increase the noise reduction. If your goal is to take particularly cinematic shots, you should reduce the sharpness even further. But be careful, this will make the image very soft and it may be necessary to add sharpness in post. Personally, I don't think the shots from the Pocket 3 look overly sharp or digital. I therefore don't find it absolutely necessary to reduce the sharpness further for normal shots. For more manual settings, you need to activate the Pro mode. Here you can set the exposure and also the white balance completely manually. However, I would like to show you a few things in automatic mode today. Especially when the camera focuses on your face, it also adjusts the exposure accordingly. This usually works quite well, but sometimes the background and the whole image is slightly overexposed as a result. If this bothers you, you can set an exposure correction here on the left under EV and set a slightly negative value for example. The automatic mode will now expose the image slightly darker. By the way, you can also correct the exposure during the recording. To do this, swipe from the right edge to the left during the recording and you can now expose the image brighter or darker by dragging the EV slider up or down. In poor lighting conditions, you should use the camera in low light mode as mentioned before. Regardless of this, for good image quality, 
the camera should never use an ISO value above 1600. Here on the right, you can set the ISO range, for example 50 to 1600, and then the automatic mode will only use ISO values in this range. There are two other important features of the Pro mode that you should be familiar with. The colors in the standard mode of the Pocket 3 are very nice and the dynamic range is also relatively good. However, if you want to edit the colors of your shots, you should use a flat color profile. This is called D-Log M on the Pocket 3. A lock profile such as D-Log M results in a very flat look and the shots have to be edited to look good. On the other hand, you have more flexibility when color grading your shots and get a little more dynamic range. DJI provides a lot that makes it easier for you to convert your lock recordings. So if you are shooting in D-Log M, you should definitely use this LUT, if only because the lock profile also has an effect on the colors. And there is something else you should know. If you use D-Log M, the Pocket 3 will no longer optimally adjust the exposure to the face. This can lead to underexposed shots, especially in backlit situations. I would therefore not shoot in lock when vlogging. There are displays that can show significantly brighter highlights than standard screens, so-called HDR displays. An example would be the display of many modern smartphones, for example the iPhone 15. To benefit from the high dynamic range of these displays, you can set HLG under color. Your recordings will now have a significantly higher dynamic range and will display much brighter highlights. However, you can only benefit from this if you view your recordings on an HDR capable display. Due to its large sensor, the Pocket 3 creates a blurred background when the subject is in the foreground. So not everything is in focus. The camera therefore has an autofocus function that keeps the subject continuously in focus. However, you may not want this and only want to set the focus at the beginning of the shot and not want it to continuously adjust automatically during the shot. You can do this by activating single under focus mode. This is very useful for creative camera movements for example. If you activate product showcase, the Pocket 3 will automatically focus on objects in the foreground. This can be useful when filming items or objects or to create a blurred background for cinematic shots for example. Incidentally, you can also change the focus via the display by tapping on the subject that should be in focus. A yellow frame will appear and the exposure is also adjusted accordingly. But if you move the camera, the focus and exposure will change again if you have set continuous autofocus. So if you want to set the focus yourself manually via the display, it may be better to activate single mode. Once you have optimally set up the Pocket 3, you can save your settings as a preset and quickly recall them at any time. To do this, open the control menu by swiping from top to bottom. Now tap on the icon with the person and then on the plus. Here you can define several presets. This way you can save different different settings that are optimal for different situations. The really cool thing about the Pocket 3 however is that the combination of gimbal and camera provides features that would not be possible with another conventional camera. And we will now take a look at these special features. One of these is Active Track. With Active Track, the camera automatically follows a person or object. You can use it to track yourself or you can simply use it to make beautiful camera movements. You activate the feature by double tapping the subject to be tracked on the display. A green frame appears. To deactivate Active Track again, tap the display again or press the joystick once. And of course, the gimbal can do much more. The Pocket 3's gimbal has four different modes. To understand them, let's take a quick look at how the gimbal works. The Pocket 3's gimbal has three axes. A pan axis that enables lateral movements, that is panning from side to side. A tilt axis that enables movements from top to bottom. And a roll axis that enables lateral rotations. If you press and hold the joystick, you activate the lock mode. All axes are locked and the gimbal tries to keep the camera in exactly the same position. This is useful for a straightforward movement for example. For the other modes, we open the control menu again and tap on the gimbal icon at the bottom right. In follow mode, only the roll axis is locked, so you can use the gimbal to make make sideways movements and smooth up and down movements. This mode is particularly suitable for example if you are following a person or filming yourself. In tilt locked mode the tilt axis is locked. This means that the camera only allows sideways movements. Up and down movements are compensated by the gimbal. This is ideal for certain camera movements. For example for a crane shot where you move the camera from bottom to top. In FPV mode on the other hand all axes are active including the roll axis. You can now also perform lateral rotations. This is interesting for creative shots for example. But that's not all. The Pocket 3 also has a few intelligent gimbal features. You 
should also be familiar with these in order to get the most out of the pocket free. Especially if you want to film yourself frequently, for example when vlogging, it is useful if the camera automatically recognizes your face and starts tracking immediately without you having to specify yourself as the subject each time. If you activate face auto detect, the camera recognizes a face in the frame in the middle and starts tracking automatically. However, the feature only becomes active as soon as you start recording. What I don't like so much is that the face is kept in the center of the frame. This does not always correspond to optimum framing. For a better framing, the face should rather be in the upper part of the frame or in line with the rule of thirds, even on the left or right side in the upper part. To achieve this, you can use the joystick to adjust the position of the subject during the recording. Or you can use the dynamic framing feature. Here you use the joystick to select where your subject should be in the frame using the nine small boxes. For example, this small box at the top right and then press the joystick. Your subject is now automatically held in this area of the image and this works very well. Dynamic framing can be extremely useful. Just as with face auto detect, select exit to end the feature. Using spin shot, the gimbal performs an automated rotation. In the case of 90 degrees, a lateral rotation, either to the left or to the right. You start the movement by tapping on the screen or by pressing the joystick. And in the case of 180 degrees, a rotation around its own axis, whereby the camera lens rotates upwards. In both cases, you start the movement by tapping on the screen or pressing the joystick. This feature is again more suitable for creative shots. Personally, I rarely use it. We have already seen several features of the control menu. However, this menu contains a few more useful features that you should definitely know about. Apart from the presets, the orientation and the gimbal modes, selfie is very interesting. When selfie is activated, the camera will automatically start tracking as soon as it recognizes a face. Similar to face auto detect, this feature is very useful if you want to film yourself frequently. In contrast to face auto to detect however, automatic tracking is only activated when the camera is in selfie mode. In other words, when it is looking backwards in your direction. Here too, you can correct the position of the subject using the joystick. Here you can set the brightness of the display. With screen rotate and capture, you can specify that rotating the display not only switches the pocket free on, but also starts a recording immediately, a kind of quick capture mode. This can be very useful for starting a recording particularly quickly. You can also set the movement speed of the gimbal. In addition to default, you can set slow for particularly smooth movements, or fast if you have the impression that the gimbal reacts too slowly to your movements, which is sometimes the case when tracking. The settings menu also contains a few important features. Here you can format your SD card, activate the variable mode if you want to attach the pocket free to your body and take POV shots, and you can activate the useful grid which makes it easier to achieve a good composition according to the rule of thirds. But I think it's even more important that we take a closer look at the time-lapse mode, because the Pocket Freeze gimbal makes it possible to achieve particularly interesting results in this mode. As you probably know, in time-lapse mode, photos are taken at certain intervals. This is particularly suitable for showing the passage of time. If you select this recording mode and then swipe from bottom to top, you have the choice between time-lapse, hyperlapse and motion-lapse. In time-lapse mode you should use the pocket free on a tripod. The shots taken at certain intervals are automatically merged into a video by the camera. You can set the resolution and frame rate of the resulting video at the top right. As always I would recommend the highest possible resolution so 4K. The Pocket Free offers you a few presets for time-lapse recordings. If you select custom on the far right you can set the interval yourself. As a general rule, the more movement there is, the shorter the interval should be. For example, 5 seconds work well for passing clouds. But on the Pocket Free, I find the other two modes even more interesting than simple time-lapse shots. The hyperlapse mode is a kind of time-lapse mode with movement. You can move around with the camera during the recording and the result is then additionally stabilized. And this works particularly well with the gimbal. The following applies here. The higher the rate, the faster the shot is accelerated, but also the more stable it often looks. You usually achieve the best results with a rate of 15 or 30. Motion lapse is also great. This creates a time lapse shot in which the gimbal moves slowly and gives the shot an additional dynamic. If you swipe upwards, you can set the interval and duration of the recording just like with a normal time lapse recording. This setting represents the movement of the gimbal. With LTR, the gimbal moves from left to right during the recording with RTL from right to left and with custom motion 
You can define the movement of the gimbal yourself. Under Waypoint you specify the number of waypoints, so 2, 3 or 4 stops. Now move the gimbal to the desired starting position with the joystick and tap plus. Then move it to the next position and set the next waypoint with plus. As soon as you have set all the waypoints, a check mark will appear. The playback icon on the far right gives you a preview of the movement. You can now start your recording, a very useful feature. After recording, there are several ways to transfer your footage, directly via the SD card of course, but you can also connect your Pocket 3 to a PC using a cable. Once you have connected the Pocket 3 via cable, you can choose between webcam mode and file transfer mode. Of course you choose the latter to transfer files to the PC. And finally, you can transfer your recordings to your smartphone using the DJI Memo app. And as mentioned at the beginning, the app offers a few very interesting additional features. For example, you can use the app to control the Pocket 3 from a distance. The interface gives you access to more or less all of the settings that we saw in the course of this video. By drawing a frame around your subject, you can start active tracking of a subject. In addition to the usual recording modes, the app also offers you a live stream mode. And of course, you can also edit your videos with the app. There is a simple editor with a few templates and an AI editor that automatically creates a video from several clips. This also works quite well, so try it out. Once you've finished shooting with the Pocket 3 and switched it off, place it in the cover with the display facing down and the gimbal arm to the left to store it safely. And I think you now have all the information you need to have fun with your Pocket 3 for a long time. Give me a like as feedback if you found this video interesting. If you're interested in how the Pocket 3 compares to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, check out my related video. There will be more tutorials on the Pocket 3 to come. So stay tuned and see you next time.